In example two, the, the costs, we're told that the cost to produce a yearbook is $8 per yearbook and with a fixed cost of $800. And the student council decides uh, they want to sell the uh, yearbooks at a fairly low cost. They're going to send them to the st sell them to the students at $10 each. So we're asked to create functions to represent uh, cost and revenue and then uh, graph them and then comment on uh, what the point represents where those two cross. So first of all for the cost, the cost is $8 multiplied by the number of yearbooks. I'm going to let n represent the number of yearbooks, so 8 times the number of yearbooks plus 800. The fixed $800 is there no matter if you're making 10 yearbooks or 1,000 yearbooks. So it's just 8n plus 800. The revenue function, the student council is going to get revenue of $10 for each one. So 10 times the number of yearbooks they sell will be their revenue. Now to graph these two functions, this C of n equals 8n plus 800. The fixed cost is 800. So over here now, notice my scale is 500 each block. So 500, that would be 1,000. So the fixed cost is 800. So we'll put a dot here at 800. Notice it's a little bit below 1,000. And um, the uh, variable cost of 8n, if I, I'm going to actually plot a couple of points. The graph is starting right there. So for example, if we were to sell 400 yearbooks, okay, uh, we would go 8 times 400, which is 3,200, plus 800 more makes 4,000. So the cost would be at for 400 would be 4,000. And so it's a nice straight line. We're going to draw a line between those. That's what the cost function looks like. C of n equals 8n plus 800. The revenue function has no fixed amount to it. So we would start here at the origin. And I'm going to plot a point up here. And the point I'm going to plot is right there. So I'm saying, you know, if the number of yearbooks sold was 700, we will go 700 times 10, which of course is 7,000. So the revenue for 700 would be 7,000. And I'll draw my line through those, and that's my revenue function. Now notice they're, they're uh, intersecting here at the point 400, 4,000. And so just to demonstrate that that is a point on the revenue function, I already found it or showed it's on the cost function. If I were to put 400 in place of n here, 400 times 10, of course, is 4,000. So they definitely do intersect there. Now what that point represents, it represents the place or the amount of yearbooks sold that the revenue and the costs are the same. And that's often in business circles referred to as the break-even point. That's the point at which the amount of money you're taking in exactly covers the cost. You haven't made any money and you haven't lost any money. So that's called the break-even point. For B, the profit function, profit is revenue minus cost. So we would take our revenue function of 10n and subtract the cost function of 8n plus 800. Notice I'm subtracting a binomial, so you should make sure you put that binomial instead of parentheses, because when you remove them, 10n minus 8n, of course, is 2n, but it'll be minus 800. You're subtracting 800. So your profit is, you're actually making two, the ver in the variable cost, you're making uh, $2 per yearbook, but then, of course, you have to cover the 800. That's what the minus 800 refers to. Now to graph this function, if I were to sell no yearbooks whatsoever, if I had a zero in place of n here, two times of course zero is zero, so the profit would be minus 800. So if you haven't sold any yearbooks at all, you still have to pay that fixed cost of 800. So on the graph, we would start here at minus 800 and put a dot. Zero sold, we still have a, we have a negative profit, we've lost $800. And then I'm going to plot a couple other points, so for example, at 400, if we were to sell 400, 2 times 400 is 800, minus 800 is 0. So the profit is 0. And again, that's what that point represents. Uh, if the cost and revenue are the same, then you have no profit. The profit is 0. Uh, one more point I'm going to plot, not that I had to plot a third one, because it's just a straight line. But for example, if, uh, if I were selling 1,000 to my students, let's say I had a fairly large school, 2 times 1,000 is 2,000. Minus 800 would be 1,200. So the profit would be $1,200 if you sold 1,000. And so we draw a line through them, and that's our profit function. Now we're asked to comment on this, uh, this profit function here. Notice that below 500, you're losing money. At 500, you're breaking even. Okay, So that point, this graph actually illustrates the same break-even point as here. Uh, anything above 500, the student council is actually making money. And of course, the further you go beyond 500, 
sold, the more money they will make. And that's the end of the lesson.